manga tangaroa, he is kind, he is humble, he is loving, he's a singer. We don't actually label him with the things, the conditions. The main kaupapa is that his chromosomal makeup is different. Manga Tangaroa was nearly two years old and we had a kōrero around where he would go for kura. And there just wasn't really a space for him. And at the time I thought, okay, I'm a teacher, I'm going to homeschool all of my kids. And then a few weeks later, I walked around the house and I just saw exactly how I had to set it up to be a punareo. So I went to my husband and I said, Han, we're building a school. And off he went to building school and off he went to go and learn this and learn that. We had a whare in Auckland before he moved up. We sold that. We fundraised over $115,000 in three months. It's pretty special. Manga Tangaroa has taught me how to give more opportunity and more chances to those who aren't getting them. Manga Tangaro has a unique relationship with each of his siblings. He really loves his big sister Kainga. She's always been there to comfort him, to reassure him, and he really trusts her. Hone. They're just like your normal brother duo. They play fight, they tell jokes, they laugh. They're just your typical brothers. Yvonne was only 18 months when Manga Tangaroa was born, so she was still a baby herself. And she just thinks that he gets away with everything and that he's spoiled. Noti, <laughs> she's his baby. Right from when she was a newborn, he was her protector. Because he's her big brother. Mm. My husband is amazing. I've heard him like talking about it to other people. They'll be like, Oh, your wife, man. And he'll say, brother, you just gotta let them fly. <laughs> and in the back of my mind, I'm like on a broomstick, <laughs> you know, but. <laughs> I've never really been into people rushing out to Google what's wrong with my baby. I've never shared publicly that these are his conditions. It was something that Manga and I agreed on before he was born that that's called it or that's tapu to him because we don't think that's the important part of him. So we will generalise it. So we'll say he has a brain condition. As parents, that's our part to protect his um, mana motuhaketanga. How do you feel about your tūru? You get to be in your own self. Not having to sit how mama sits you. Like you can look at our baby and know that he did a care, there's something um, unique about him. I miss you so much. So I don't think there's one person in the world that's exactly like him. Mm. We can bring. Or we can bring this tiny farm. Right. Can you hold him? We do eye gaze. We do eye choices. He doesn't get frustrated, he just cheers. And we can learn a lot from that. You can teach the whole world, son. Right now, we got mahi to do. We all got jobs to do, even you. But his job might just be to, you know, make people happy. <laughs> I was frustrated, I was actually sad, and I said, Akakia, you know, where's a, where's a space for my boy? Where's a place for my baby? 
And that's when I heard, I heard the voice of my krani, my nana pa, and he said, no na tēnei whare, no na tēnei kura. And then we sold our whare. I made a deal with my husband, he was supposed to get a Harley and I was getting every other dollar to build the school. The uh, insulators punched that hole through to put the insulation in. But then I used up all my part of the deal and then so I took his Harley putia as well and used that. And we still weren't quite there so we started fundraising and that's when we saw just the aroha that the motu had. So I was inspired to build this 100% because of Manga Tangaroa. And then now it's so much bigger than him and I, you know, because it's for all Tama Ariki. We have had Tama Ariki like with cerebral palsy or we have Tama Ariki with ADHD. Um, we have Tama Ariki with Takiwa Tanga. Takiwa Tanga te kuku Māori mō te autism. The kupu tama ariki, it's just such an empowering kupu. When we say disabled or if we say disorder, it kind of creates that um, less than, you know, whereas kupu like takiwatanga or tama ariki, it puts a more than look, um, lens on it. And so tama ariki, it's adding, it's adding to the child not taking away. Hey, manga tangaroa. Amangi kui e tia nei. Motia ba no. Motia tia nei. Ai. Yeah, we're all tired, son, but we have work to do. We all have to do mahi, even you. I don't think we've tasted this one, but I like it. E tino re ka kiau. All right. So when he was born, he was just he was breastfed, and and he used to eat. Um, you know, all the things that a pepe would have. Aye, I can see you want some more. And then after one of the brain surgeries to put the shunt into his brain with a catheter that drains off the excess spinal fluid out of his brain. And then it needed a few revisions. It, was, it wasn't it was working properly. And then after one of those revisions, he forgot how to swallow. Good moving your mouth. Tino pie. Aye, good. That's great. You're moving it around. And they just said, oh, it might have been an anaesthetic, you know, just keep um, offering it and it will come back and that, but it just never came back. And so now he's fully um, fed through a gastrostomy tube that's in his stomach. And that was one of the big things about heading over to Australia was getting the support needed to get my baby eating again. And while we were there, we trialled the vital stim therapy where they actually put these like electro magnet, electro current things on his throat that stimulates the swallow reflex. And it was beautiful to see, you know, because he was so excited. And then on maybe the third session, he ate and swallowed safely around three tablespoons of custard. Not as yummy as the custard. And I was like, man, this is amazing. You know, I've been, I just want that for my baby. I want him to have a kai, because kai is at kai, when you're a Māori, it's not just a meal. It's not just food. Like, kai has so much mana. Oh, I know oh, that's why we're so luscious, because we have kai for everything. We have kai when we're happy, he said. You know, at hui, at tangi, like, it's a huge part of who we are. And I want him to have that in his life, that part of our culture, it, for him to be involved. It's not organic, homemade, <laughs> you know, but we're just practicing. Mm -hmm. And we can have custard. Look at Mother Tana, he's having custard. Custard? Be cheerful, have you say? Hi, Mother Tana Roa. Hi, Mother Tana. 
he's rolling, he's pushing to stand. Yeah, Monkey! Pardon me! He's got more head control. He comes up and out of his headrest to look around the corner. Look at your head! You're so amazing! <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! Amazing. His arms, his fingers, he's opening his hands. Etu? Etu? Go away, Tene, to a tangata. And. I'm so proud. You say awesome. Music therapy is the use of music within a therapeutic relationship, usually with a registered music therapist, and it's to address non-musical goals generally. So that can be motor coordination or working on um, social skills in a community setting or supporting someone who's working on communication goals or speech goals as well. <laughs> So Manga Tangaroa, he's a singer, you know, <laughs> he loves singing. <laughs> the purpose is to work on goals in a musical and creative way and in a collaborative environment. <laughs> We're using music to engage and promote action and the mechanics of our mouths to sing to be able to then speak later with clarity. <laughs> well music really taps into the emotional centers of our brain. Just like emotions rise and fall, so too does music. Sometimes if there's something there, it will amplify that because of the intensity or the volume or the quickness of the music. Mangzi is a beautiful, beautiful person. Um, it was just wonderful to have the opportunity to make music with him. I saw him holding the bow, pulling it across. You saw him playing with his fingers on the guitar and, and really working towards those movements. Um, he didn't just like sit there and go, oh, I'm not gonna do that. He was right in there and just constantly um, singing and also um, vocalizing throughout as well. So engaged, so alive. He wouldn't even pass me off on our wedding day in front of his mother. Mighty We got nominated for the Community of the Year Award. We're just this humble little <laughs> puna reo up in Kaiko here. He loves wearing good clothes, loves wearing number ones. Aye, aye, manga tsangaroa. I know those nannies are going to come in for the pash. The beautiful thing that it does is it brings our tama ariki into the limelight where historically 
they've been pushed on the side. Ooh. Dad chose this one. Mum wanted the suit jacket. Dad's like, uh, nah, bro. <laughs> it helps to continue the conversation. It helps to have that corridor about why did we have to build a, build a school in the first place for him? Why couldn't he just be at your fella's school? All right. <laughs> yeah, he can't wait to wear this one. You think we're gonna win or lose? I think we really won, not as in the prize, but we won because we get to be uh, real for our, our children with disabilities well, in public. A, if you think about it, and what our kaupapa actually was, yeah. was to bring awareness that here, uh, Yanta Maraki are getting the recognition they deserve. It's time now to introduce you to the three finalists for the Mighty Ten New Zealand Community of the Year, Napo Fidinaki or Te To kick off. This award, please welcome your first finalist, Aviva, represented tonight by co-leader Gwenda Kendrick. Next up, let's get to know our second finalist, Te Punareo o Manga Tongaroa, represented on stage this evening by founder Clara Aperehama Kopa. <laughs> What I learned from my clanny was you just got to turn up for your people, for your whanau, for your iwi, for your hapori, mm. and especially mm. turn mm. up. Mm. <laughs> He's a singer. <laughs> he thinks we're about to bust out a boy at all. <laughs> but we just need to turn up for each other and especially need to turn up for those who can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, he, he, he thinks he's famous, that's why. He kind of is right now. Kia ora. Ha. Kia ora. Sorry. The 2024 Mighty Team New Zealand Community of the Year winner is the Cyclone Gabriel Volunteer. Yeah. It was an honour to be nominated. It's, it's a huge honour. And it's a privilege that us as a whānau, not just our whānau though, but our community in Kaipui, all of those people that have supported our little kaupapa, we wouldn't have been here without them. What's next? Well, I don't know how serious she is, but she's always pretty serious, my wife. And she's been talking about building a school. Ka hore, mahi te mahi. You're the only good one. The rest of them have got no ears. Thank you for cheering for me, baby. Hi. <laughs> they want a dirty driveway. Or a nice house. What's maybe? He's a lovely person. Who is? Who is he? I describe him as a fun guy because he's always wanting to play, not just wanting to watch the TV all day. And I love that he's always tired, like me. I don't know why, probably because we're getting older. 
We're going to be working with Arco to do a master plan. So we have an empty section here. You have to legally be enrolled at school when you're six. And so we could, we're looking at maybe having a small could have or maybe five students or something. I don't know. I've got to get my I've got to get my boyfriend on board. He said no more, no more. Okay, there he goes. That's why that's why he's getting called boyfriend because he's arguing back all the time. When Mangatangaro turns six in August, he has to legally be enrolled in a school, but I don't actually want him to go to any of those schools unless I go with him. But they're not going to hire a teacher just for one baby. The biggest concern I have is our whare tapafa, and we, are, we already know we got smashed just building a pillar. It took a huge hit on us as a whānau, spiritually, financially, mentally. Mm. You know, and that's the risk, because it's taken ages for us to get back on our feet. This is what you've always told me. Power flows to the point of focus. Those are, those are the words you share with me all the time. Mm. So if you focus on problems, there's more problems. But if we focus on solutions, haramai. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I'm willing to have another yarn about it. I'm willing to have a karakia about it. And I think I've just got to be a little bit more open-minded. And this whole journey has always been about giving the best for our son. Manga Tangaro has already changed the world. And I think that um, he's going to continue to change the world through his example of love and kindness. Oh. My job as a mum is to make sure that he gets the opportunities that he deserves and just to be there to tow to ball and support him to do whatever he, he wants to do. I'm not sure, I just hope that he knows that his mama and papa have tried their very best. <laughs>